talk by you, Dr. Deepa. So I would like to first ask you to describe your journey as a plant scientist. We all are, will all be happy to know how you became a plant scientist. How was your journey? Yes, so obviously. Uh, actually, born in the small village in the West Bengal. Uh, from the childhood, I was very much uh, uh, fascinated about the uh, plant. Uh, uh, my school, I start my schooling from the government school up to 10th class. After that, I moved to the uh, Kolkata for the higher study, uh, where uh, I did the uh, graduation in chemistry. Uh, after that, I studied biochemistry in under the um, University of Calcutta. Uh, uh, where uh, during the MSc period, I was very much uh, uh, I was very much uh, interested about the research and development. So from this time, I determined that I will do the PhD. So for that, uh, after my completing my the uh, biochemistry degree, then I was searching uh, for the proper lab for doing the research. In the meantime, I have seen that the Professor Sopan, that's a very renowned uh, scientist who came from the International Rice Research Institute to Calcutta University. I have seen uh, his different work in the golden rice and high, uh, high iron rice, all these things which uh, attracted me very much. So then I decided that I will uh, start my journey in the plant science. So I started, I did the PhD under Professor Shapan Kedatta and Parabi Dutta in the Calcutta University. During my the PhD, I developed the low lipoxygenase rice to increase the storage stability and viability of the rice seed. I was also associated with the different projects for development of higher in rice, the low phytic acid rice, development of the all tolerance like rice also. After completing of the PhD, I, in the PhD, I was mainly involved in the nutritional genomics. Then I uh, shifted uh, to the NI teacher under uh, Dr. Niranjan Chakraborty, where I uh, was associated with the organelle proteomic study for understanding the dehydration state of the plant. If you see, the 2017 to 2019 was a very uh, golden time for me. Depending on my research work, in 2017, I was awarded the INSA Young Scientist Award. After that, 2018, I was selected for the Nazi Young Scientist 2018. And the same year, 2018, I was selected for the Fulbright Postdoctoral Fellowship. Then I uh, moved after that, 2000, middle of the 2008, I moved uh, to the uh, Cornell University where I was associated with the professor class. In the, with the professor class, I continued the work in the proteomic study of the male. After that, uh, in the middle of the 2019, I was selected as the assistant professor Central University of Rajasthan, and now I am continuing here my research. Mainly I am doing here the dehydration uh, um, test tolerance of the plant, especially the rice, and another is the legume. Legume is the very much important. Now it is a good source for the protein and that's why I'm interested about the rice and the uh, legume, especially chickpea. I am now continuing to develop my lab uh, for development of the stress tolerant plant and, and this is. Now this is the journey uh, from my childhood and till now. I am now going forward. Uh, let's see what happens. I must say a fascinating journey. <laughs> Thank you so far with so many uh, variety of things and uh, so many a variety of uh, legumes, rice, uh, organellar proteomics. The, these are very you know varied fields which you have incorporated. I have not mentioned here the. Them I have not mentioned here the microRNA. Also, I have also done the microRNA analysis in the rice root. How the microRNA actually involved in the uh, transportation of the metal ions. That's a very interesting uh, research, but uh, I could not uh, put here, but theme is different. That's why I could not, in future, if I get any opportunity, obviously I can share with you uh, other research. I cannot also share my unpublished data also. Hopefully if I got publication, then I, feel I, could, uh, I can uh, share with you. Sure, sure, sir. Sir, my next question is, which modern tools and techniques will help us in improving 
the storage of rice grains yes uh, mm. uh, the if you see uh, the uh, storage stability if you see storage stability is the one of the major problem the in the developing country the post harvest technology is very poor and in, if you see uh, if you see the developed country their post harvest technology is very very improved our uh, it is it is very uh, difficult to maintain uh, the uh, the uh, storage uh, storage of the rice gets under the um, uh, temperature control for our the farmer it is very cost effective so we need to think about uh, this process if you see the lipoxylic enzymes of the rice seed is very much in, uh, very uh, it has a negative role for the seed quality deterioration deterioration okay so if you uh, down regulate the lipoxylic enzyme in the rice seed we can increase the storage stability of the rice seed so this is the one of the technique if uh, we can uh, it is not it is the problem other crop also if you see the wheat soybean this seed content in very uh, large amount of lipoxylic enzyme and deter uh, nutritional quality deterioration is very fast so if we adopt this uh, down regulate if we adopt this technique if you down regulate the lipoxylic enzyme Uh, by uh, in that study i have used the rna technology i started this work in 2007 2008 but now different techniques is available if you see the crispr cas technology if you see the genome editing technology you can use easily this all this technology and you can down regulate the lipoxylic enzyme in a tissu specific manner in rice and other crop then you can increase the storage stability of the this crop and you can increase the viability of the uh, crop so both the, if you down regulated this one you can increase the uh, ensure the, uh, uh, the nutritional quality and the productivity also so uh, globally we understand that food security is very important yes. but what are your thoughts on the nutritional security yes. of the population it's very uh, very good question uh, the we always talking about the food security if you see the nutritional security is very much important <clears throat> because in the developing country if you see the people in the developing country have to depend on the major crop like rice with all these things okay so if you if you uh, maintain uh, if you round up the lipoxylic enzyme and if if you increase the storage stability uh, you can increase the nutritional component of this part otherwise you can by genetic engineering you can increase the carotenoid content you can increase the high lysine content you can increase the iron zinc all this content in this way in can you can ensure the nutritional security and we have also uh, see the food security also our population is growing tremendous increasing very rapidly and the same time if you see uh, the our um, land land agriculture land also decreasing decreasing rapidly so population is increasing and agriculture land is decreasing there is a report in 2015 the production of the crop should be increased by double to meet the world food security so nutritional security and food security we uh, should uh, see uh, we should uh, compare both two things both is equally important uh, for nature near future Uh, thank you sir in in your view what new scientific approaches will be central to plant biology which will impact a future agriculture and agro ecosystem uh, uh see the research is a dynamic process if you see the new tools is coming previously people used the rna technology now people is using uh, the crispr cas genome editing we don't know what will come in the new newer future we should accept the newer things also okay so if you see the if we increase the uh, food productivity so so we, in that case you have to approach different multi approach genomic approach you can approach the proteomic approach yes yeah, different integrated omic approach okay with this omic approach uh, you can identify your novel candidate gene and you can go for the uh, uh, molecular breeding uh, and uh, though the people uh, Uh, adopted uh, the, uh, the conventional breeding this breeding uh, may require uh, uh, huge time but if you go for the molecular breeding you, if you, you, you can achieve the goal very quickly okay but both the molecular breeding and um, 
tradition and breeding both are important for the agriculture productivity so in the last i would like to conclude uh, with some word of advice for our young researchers what would you suggest them who are like you know in their masters uh, who are young phds uh, your word of advice for them uh obviously the now the plant science has the tremendous role the food security and the nutritional security uh, we have already discussed uh, we need in the near future uh, with increasing uh, population so government also uh, uh, popularize the plant science giving the funding so this is the opportunity for the young researcher to adopt this for their career as well as the scientific improvement uh, i i should uh, i would say uh, the researcher uh, sh uh, should be focused uh, their research they should uh, uh, they should uh, do hard work uh, to get their goal and uh, i would suggest they should uh, attend different international conference national conference uh, there in their field so they can learn lot of things from their field and learning process also is very uh, important uh, when you are doing the phd or research you parallelly you should read every day what uh, the new uh, research topic is coming it, uh, it it is very much uh, important uh, to be uh, to keep you updated so if you don't i think uh, don't be worry about uh, the uh, mm -hmm. about other thing if you focus your uh, research if you can do the good quality of research you will uh, you will achieve your goal so this is my suggestion please don't be impatient do your work in the focused manner uh, in the parketo that you will obviously get achieved your goal thank you